Hello, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about parallax and show you how to do some problems um, for an astronomy or a physics unit. Now parallax is a very uh, unique phenomenon that happens whenever you view an object from very, very far away. So for example, we have our sun and parallax is pretty much when you look at something from one perspective and then it appears to change when you look at it from another perspective. The easiest demonstration I tell my students is extend your thumb out like such. If you close one eye and you look at something on the background and you cover it up with your thumb and all of a sudden you open up the other eye, your thumb will appear to change. Well, what's interesting is astronomers knew this, Copernicus and Galileo did. Um, and this is kind of one way we help prove the uh, geo, sorry, the heliocentric model was correct because the Earth is moving. So our perspective is changing. Now how astronomers use it is very simple, which is a little bit of trigonometry. Now Earth orbits the Sun. So I think we all know this, like such. And what's interesting is astronomers will look at a star that's very, very far away, or an object they believe. And what's interesting is, and here's the background, we'll draw some background stars. So what they'll do is astronomers will take an image of the sky part, and if you notice, if they take an image of it, and let's say they're looking at this object right here, they will see this object pretty much somewhere in this area right here. And as the Earth orbit orbit around the sun, so, every, so this takes approximately six months, it revolves I should say, they take an image again of the exact same part of the night sky like such. And what's cool is the background stars, um, example, they're so, so far away that they don't really change that much. But what's interesting is objects, um, celestial objects or even uh, objects in our solar system, when you view them from a different perspective during different times of the year, they will appear to move. They'll shift. So what's cool is you can look this up online. You can see a uh, parallax of Pluto or something and you'll see Pluto just kind of bouncing back and forth in the night sky and as the background remains static. And this is actually how we found we find objects uh, at a very, very uh, far distance away. Now, this requires some trig in order for us to calculate this. Now, as the Earth revolves around the Sun, it's always going to be approximately one astronomical unit out. All right? So it doesn't matter if it's here or here. It's still always going to be one astronomical unit away. All right. Now if we draw a baseline from the center of this point right here, so right in the middle of our sun, all the way over, you can now see that we have a right triangle. Now this is an example, a very uh, easy demonstration or easy calculation to make because in trigonometry with right triangles, if you know this angle here and you know this is a right triangle, you can then calculate the distance that Earth is relatively to this known object here. Okay, And this is what pretty much parallax is. We just take images of the same sky and watch it shift and we can calculate this angle. Now please note, the angle a star moves, or its parallax angle, is going to be 2 theta. So the star will appear to move twice as much. But in reality, if you want to find the distance, you have to break up that apparent parallax angle into two separate components. And if you know this angle theta, then you know this angle theta. And vice versa, as far as angle theta, be this. Astronomers can also calculate this angle by looking at an image of the night sky. And I guess their zenith, or straight out, they can also find this angle here and this angle. So there's many ways you can do this. Okay. So now if we use our trig, so we have our right triangle here, we can derive this. So if you know this, you can go ahead and skip. So if you know this angle here and this, and we know this is one astronomical unit, and this is our distance to the stars, and we want to find this. So notice this is our hypotenuse side. This is our adjacent. And this is our opposite. So we have adjacent and opposite side. We don't really know the hypotenuse. So you want to use the tan function opposite over adjacent. And in this case, our opposite side is one astronomical unit. And our adjacent side is our distance. So we're just solving for distance now. Distance is just one over tan 
of theta. So one astronomical unit. And please note, this angle here must be in degrees. Okay. Now you can also do this for stellar parallax. Now stellar, stellar parallax has a little bit easier formula. And what this means is the difference between what they call celestial parallax, it's just kind of objects, or I should say um, planetary parallax per se. These are objects within our solar system. They'll have a greater parallax angle because they're closer. And stellar parallax, example, now we're looking at stars that are very, very far away. So now this is that little black dot is our sun. So when you look at this baseline here, so there's a star, and you do the same thing. Try to draw us the best I can. Notice our adjacent side, or I should say, our uh, sorry, our opposite side of the triangle almost becomes next to nothing. So you will almost also see this formula here. The distance is equal to one over the parallax angle. Well, well, the apparent change, and where d is in parsecs and P is in arc seconds. Now remember, a parsec is 3.26 light years. That is one parsec. Okay, so that's a very, very huge, huge number in a unit where P is also going to be in arc seconds. And how we find that is one degree is equal to approximately 60 arc minutes. So you can think of it like this. When you have this circle, and you or a center here, and you pull out one degree, in that degree right there, so I pull this out, there's going to be 60 arc minutes. And again, if I were to pull out another little sliver of that, and I were to pull this red sliver out, I get this. And there's going to be 60 arc seconds. So this keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So, so an arc second is a very, very small, very, very small degree. Okay? And one degree is equal to 300, well, 3,600 arc seconds. Okay? It's a very, very small unit. So with knowing this and a little bit of trig, we can then calculate the distance to very, very far objects. So let's do that real quick. Okay? I've got some examples here, okay? Example one, Pluto was found by, by using parallax. So astronomers took images of one part of the sky, and half a year later, they saw an object move with an angle of roughly 2.9 degrees in the night sky. So pretty much they saw Pluto doing this. So here's our background stars. And they saw Pluto jumping back and forth, okay? And this angle was 2.9 degrees. So this is gonna be the exact same thing we were talking about. Now, a lot of students make the mistake of, they just go ahead and plug 2.9 degrees right in there, but that's not, or here's Pluto, apparently, I should say. They're, they're, it's appearing to jump back and forth. So a lot of kids, they just plug that right in there. What we need to do is we need to actually divide that by 2, because if you remember, this right here is the exact same thing as what we went over before, okay? So it's the same thing. So we need to take this angle right here and divide it by 2. Okay. And that's going to tell us exactly what this angle is here. So we can use that for our formula. So don't forget to do that. You can get approximately 1.45 degrees. So we want to solve the distance, one astronomical unit over 10 of theta. Now please know I'm using astronomical unit here in degrees. If I, so example, if I use, I use astronomical units here, it's going to spit out a distance in astronomical units. If I use parsecs, it's going to spit out a unit in parsecs. So please note these two are related. So they're directly proportional. So now, so we'll do 1 divided by 10 of 1.45. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, okay? So we'll do 1 divided by tangent of 1.45. And that gives you approximately 39.5 astronomical units. And what's interesting is that's the semi-major axis of Pluto. Now, sometimes the year Pluto has a greater parallax angle than that, and it has a smaller. But on average, um, this is correct. Okay. Let's do a stellar one. All right. Let's do a stellar parallax. Now, Proxima Centauri is Earth's closest star. It has a parallax angle of 4.26 times 10 to the negative fourth degrees. It's a very, very small degree. How far away is Proxima Centauri in parsecs? 
All right, so this is um, the same thing in essence, and you can do this multiple ways, but my rule of thumb is that the object is not in our solar system. Traditionally, we're going to do the, uh, the uh, parsec equation one, which is just one over the parallax angle. So now we got 4.27 times 10 to the negative fourth degrees, and we need to convert that to arc seconds. Remember, in one degree, so one degree, there are 3,600 arc seconds. And this is going to give us our parallax angle for that. Okay, so you're going to do 4.27 times 10 to the negative fourth times 3,600. And that gives me a parallax angle of 1.5372. Now again, please note, this angle right here is actually how much this object appears to move, okay? We have to take it and divide it in half. So we really need to take this number and divide it in half. So really, I, this is a 2 pi, or 2 pi, 2 pi, I'd say. So we divide that by 2, and we get a p of 0 0.7686 arc seconds. So our distance in this case, and this is arc seconds, 1 divided by 0 0.78, oh, sorry, excuse me, 0 0.7686, so 1 divided by that answer, and I get roughly a distance of 1.3 parsecs. And remember, that's a very, very large unit. If you want to do that in light years, 1.3 parsecs. One parsec is equal to 3.26 light years. And that gives me approximately 4.24 light years. So that is pretty much how far away Earth's closest star is. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and please give me the thumbs up.